Welcome to all of you to this new edition of Lexio Musica, the place for great lyrics, great music and great meaning. My name is Guilain Prince. I'm a Franciscan friar from Canada. I love rock music forever. Hard rock, metal and prog. And once a week with all of you, uh, we stop all the other activities. We listen closely to a song. We read carefully the lyrics. We try to understand the musical construction of the song and what is the meaning of the song. Um, we are on what seems to be a fabulous journey. The new album of Epica called Omega was published last February 2021. So let me give you the screen first. So we uh, began uh, last Wednesday with the premiere of the reaction video to the um, opening and the first song of the album. Um, this was uh, right after the closing of a 10-week uh, series on Rush, the Canadian band. I absolutely loved it. The song, The Garden, was kind of a, I would say, a testament uh, to themselves and to the fans, I think. So, Earlier this week, I reacted to the um, opening called uh, uh, Alpha Anteludio and the first song, Abyss of Time, subtitled Countdown to Singularity. Um, here is the analysis of the same, same song in English. Don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel and if you want to be notified as soon as there's a new uh, video out, just uh, push on the little bell beside the subscribe button. This is the very first, well, the second video, but the, uh, uh, the analysis of the first section of the album, the opening of the album called Omega. That's the eighth studio album of Epica. It was published in February 2021. Both section the um, the uh, the Alpha Anteludium and the song The Abyss of Time, both of them uh, they are credited for composition by uh, to Mark Janssen and Epica, and the lyricist the main lyricist is Mark Janssen. Now, how this song develops? Mainly with the grand piano and orchestra, we begin with the, uh, I would say, middle piece, middle pace. Uh, uh, to me, it sounds like a six, a sl um, middle pace six eight, but it could be probably uh, written down as a three fourth as well. What we can say, it's uh, it's it's like wavy. Uh, it, it it feels like it's uh, well, it's this it's close to the rhythm of a valse, to be frank. Uh, the theme is played by a flute relayed by the whole orchestra. It's a beautiful, and after there's a beautiful wooden flute. I wrote here of Irish style because uh, the only kind of flute I know of wood that where alterations are made by the, the fingers being more or less over the, uh, will make the with the sound very, um, you can really hear the breath, the air in the sound. I love that kind of very organic um, sound. And then it, it becomes, it, 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 it enlarges, we say s'élargir in French, grandeur, the theme, uh, the, the theme is relayed by the orchestra, like I said, with the addition this time of the choir. Here come the first words. The words, as usual, <laughs> epica will not change. Very important words are written down in Latin. Uh, there you have them on the, the left hand side. Um, beware, I am not a specialist of Latin. So I made, I did my best to make um, a translation that was uh, readable. But if I made any mistake, like I will remind you all the times, please correct me. I don't want to be right, especially when it's not my specialty. I just want to understand. 
So if you have anything to say that um, would bring light to my understanding, please put it down in the comment section. So here is my take on the my I try to understand Latin. I don't know Latin very well. I am the first seed of everything on earth. I am also the end of the universe, Alpha Omega. Who is this I? Who is at the beginning and at the end? And what happens in between? I'm the source, I'm the origin, and I'm also at the end of the universe. Let's continue. Probably we will have the answer. Uh, I, if not in that song, probably in the album somewhere. So that's it for the opening. And there's an immediate connection with uh, the... Um, it, in fact, it shouldn't be separated in a way. So what is the meaning of this opening? Our interludium. Um, alpha and the album is Omega. So the first title of this piece is Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega means beginning and end, origins and destination. Um, uh, it's a very proper way, uh, formally, to describe the opening of an album. So it could be only formal, but it is not. But it is also the content, the, the, the matter, the opening of the matter, of the content of the album. The second part, anteludium, means basically uh, before playing. Ludium, you know the, the expression, le, what is ludique in French, has to do with games or playing, the fact of playing. So it is what is before playing, before the core section. So, But here it's more than an open, uh, opening in a way, because this theme will come back in the first song. I wonder if it will come back in other songs as well. Uh, it presents the musicality of the compositions and the arrangements. This is fabulous music. It's really, it really is. Um, maybe you don't like metal, but if you don't like, I'm not, I'm not sure why you listen to my analysis, but if you like great music, you are mostly welcome, very, very welcome, in fact. But be prepared because this, uh, I would say, sumptuous opening will start a very metal section with growling. And there is the first song, The Abyss of Time, with a subtitle called Countdown to Singularity. The introduction is um, the metal section um, enters uh, with the full orchestra and will play two cycles. And then there will be some kind of tension, an opening. There's expectation of something. Begins then a dialogue between the growling male voice. You know, it's a mock, the one who wrote the song and composed the music. And a female, the uh, singer is Simone. Um, they will dialogue and we will see what is this dialogue all about. The first, the male voice begins, fill the void in me, see life beyond the veil, replace all thoughts from the abyss. That's the male voice and then Simonic enters with cosmic energy. There's a big void in, maybe, a person. And my take on this would be that this dialogue happens in one human heart or in the human soul of humanity. You have a dark section and a bright section here, represented by the growling male voice, and the the, uh, the uh, I would say aerial uh, female voice. Uh, there is the the impression of void from one part, but the other part says, well, it's because there's a veil in front of your face. You don't see all the way to the deepness of yourself. 
replace all thoughts from the abyss. Here in this section, the abyss is synonymous with the void. Okay, we will see that the abyss of time is another meaning, but for me, as, as we'll see here, um, the thoughts of the abyss would be the abyss uh, of, of, of darkness, the abyss of darkness. But see, life with cosmic energy, as if you can make some kind of, of make things completely permuté, we say in French. Um, to remove the veil would be to bring cosmic energy, as if this energy comes from deeper than the abyss. Or maybe it comes from another part. It doesn't matter really. Just to know that there's a possibility, even if the void and the abyss seems very deep, and these thoughts don't seem to, for now to be very positive there's a way not to be overwhelmed by these by removing the veil and by letting the cosmic energy come in in night the light in the here is very uh, i wonder there is no rhyme why using suddenly the uh, i would say the royal you that you have in classical why is suddenly this reverence in front of the other member of the dialogue i don't know i don't have an explanation for that but similar demand to the first uh, first verse ignite the light in me bring the light in me okay now the woman Fill out the tree of your life. Your life being compared to a tree and has to be filled. Filled with life. The life. So there is, if you compare it, there is some thoughts of death. And But if you fill the tree of life, then the light, the life, will gain over the, I would say, the dark sec the dark part. I'm not sure that the dark part is removed. It's pretty much like there is some kind of unification of the two dimensions. We will see about that. That's, that would be my first understanding. And then together, now they are not two persons together. They're saying we are rooted deep in the darkness and keep growing towards the light. So the roots of a tree are in darkness, but the leaves and the branches, they, they, they try to reach out to the light. This would be a kind of um, symbolic uh, understanding of humanity. We have roots in darkness, but we try to reach light and together we try to reach like, so all parts of ourselves try to reach uh, towards the yeah try to reach uh, towards the light now the, the, here is a section um i would call it close to a pre-chorus uh quality the melody is extremely it's really really beautiful so it has a chorus quality be without your fears for a thousand years. Be without your fears for a thousand years. Search for stillness deep inside. Um, there's a kind of, a, I don't know if it's off tempo, but it's much slower, this section. Uh, the tempo is slower. And uh, be without your fears. That's, I don't know if you can ask someone to be without fears. As, as if it can be commanded. I'm not sure of that. But there's a wish, at least, a wish that you don't live in fear for a thousand years. So for a very long time, maybe unlimited time. In how can we be, can you be without fear? Search for stillness deep inside. So there is stillness deep inside. 
Okay, there is peace somewhere inside. Fourth paragraph. One thought that grows in the abyss of time fills up the vast space with matter of, and life. Free of the darkness that feathers the soul, find at the source the end of your goal. One thought that grows in the abyss of time. Abyss of time then would be the very far past. One thought at the origin of the world. That's an interesting idea. There is someone, let's put it that way, someone being there at the origin of time and this thought fills up the vast space with matter and life. So there is a thought, there is a subject and from that thought life and matter. Free the darkness that feathers the soul. So is it the thought that frees or free the darkness is now a second person imperative it, it's 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 turning towards us now and free of the darkness that fetters the soul find at the source the end of your goal that would be my my take on this one so free from the darkness that feathers that that imprison the soul um, find at the source so try to find that source get that source that brought matter and life that original thought find it and find at the source the end so your source is the end of your uh, itinerary of your journey so at your source is the end at the same time so you're going back to your source but at, like we will say there's a difference between starting from a point and going back to the same or starting from a point and arriving at a goal that has the same origin but you are not at the right at the same place you have evolved and i think there's a clear notion of evolution you're not going back to childhood you're not going back to the exact place because you have changed on the course of your life so it's yeah there is a, is a cyclical dimension to the song but not only cyclical there is something more than that I, I i the way i understand it did tell me if you think it's not right um there is the entire which is basically the two cycles of the uh, what are called the metal introduction and then again the expectation the waiting for the new the uh, the new words and there comes the fifth paragraph so find the spark in me see life beyond your dream replace the darkest emotion with your divinity that's very interesting uh, find the spark in me uh, i don't know if the person is saying to find the spark in me uh, i'm not sure i think he's talking to himself at, at the second person saying find it find the spark in me uh, and replace the darkest emotion. I think that would be my take on the uh, growling voice of Mark. To which Simone answers, see life beyond your dream. I've been through that many times uh, in Epica's repertoire. I've seen many times uh, the, the word dreams has two meaning in Epica uh, Epica's song. Sometimes it's something very positive, but very, uh, many times it was not positive. The dream was kind of, I would call it the illusion. Uh, and that would go with the veil of the first paragraph. So see life, you see, the dream here blocks the vision of life. So that wouldn't be a positive uh, dream here. 
with your divinity oh this is interesting because it might suggest two things it might suggest that you are yourself a god or god or it uh, you have a, a divine dimension in your life uh, you know that there these i would say this element of creed you will find it in uh, hinduism for example um and uh, as for the i would say the jewish and the christians uh, you know that i'm a christian i'm a franciscan um we would talk about the, the divinity of a person as being the divine quality that has been given to us uh, it's not as if we are god but we have been given uh, divine uh, characteristics by God by participation we call anyways I think it could be both here you will see why I, I, I tend to think that it's the divine dimension of humanity I would tend to think that but your take is as good as mine on this one uh, ignite a flame in me synonymous of the previous verse pretty much unite with your inner light so i think that simone is pretty much um pretty much uh embodies with her voice the inner light and as you can see ignite the flame unite with the inner light and then they are together to sing we should free ourselves from the shadow and the boundage of the night so together the, the, it, it, as if yeah there is a darker side uh fears illusion uh illusions dream there is a darker side but i don't think it is per se the shadow the night i think that the darker side or the illusion is by uniting with the inner light will be able to flee from night and shadows be without your fears you already know that but the second line is different be the master of your light so by not being united you are not the master of your life you are you uh, you, you you we say uh, vivre ou subir sa vie to live or to it's being imposed by someone else or by the circumstances and so be the master of your life means united you have a power on your life if you do not bring together these pieces then you'll you'll be a spectator of your own life and and uh, yeah you will not be able to live it fully um one thought that grows in the abyss of time abyss of time seems to be the very far fills up the space you'd already know that section it's identical be without your fears for a thousand year search for stillness deep inside uh, we uh, already know that uh was it was it repeated here i'm surprised a little bit here but uh, anyways same thing and then then we leave the double uh, the double bass half tempo two cycles again and then we find back the six eight of uh, the swinging and dancing feel that we saw in the opening there it is so for me musically there is the celebration of the unification of the two dimension of it's the equivalent of those uh, these two singers singing together now in a way basically they are dancing to unity has been uh, maybe not accomplished but we are walking firmly towards that direction uh, paragraph nine yeah the number three it's a mistake there uh with the choir fight back your fears forever so the, there's a battle and the battle is against fear illusion 
the battle is uh, against disintegration, the fact that you are not a unified person. Learn to unlearn. So there are things that are a prison for your true self. And by learning how to, I can say, unweave this part of your life, you'll find freedom. You'll be a master of your life. Now, there's the spoken voice in the video. It seems to be Mark. I don't know if it's Mark for, for real. Um, in the beginning, there was a timeless and spaceless nothing less, uh, nothingness. So I, I do it again. In the beginning, there was a timeless, spaceless nothingness. And into that nothingness came a thought, purposeful, all pervading. So ended the voice. It's very interesting because very many elements of Epica are taken from mythology pretty much everywhere. I know their interest for religions in general, for philosophies, so I'm not surprised that you have words from a little bit everywhere. But when I read a paragraph like this one, I don't, I, I don't know what you think, but I see that there's an understanding of some kind of thought before, uh, in, in this nothingness, and this thought, purposeful. So it's not an impersonal thought. All pervading, being able to, uh, to um, be everywhere, ended the void. So the void ended in a thought. And of course, me as a Christian, there is the understanding of an original creator of some kind, uh, from in Christianity, we talk about the word, but it's basically the thought that we have. But I would not say that it is a Christian vision. I'm just saying that there are similarities sometimes with, I would say, Hinduism, sometimes Buddhism, sometimes it might be, I think they have an interest for Latin America as well. Um, a mythology. So I think th there's a little bit of everything in their songs, but here there is something that seems to be very sim similar to the Judeo Christian understanding of creation. So ended the void. So thought being the instrument of uh, non void non-nothingness, the thought. And that's a very interesting, uh, very interesting thought. <laughs> now comes the bridge, the end head banging section with the, is it half tempo? I don't know, I didn't take the time to take the, um, the, <laughs> the tempo of each of the sections. It's just, it's much slower, two cycles again. It's pretty much standard. And then there is the growling voice. Search the demiurge, shaper of, the, of a false universe. Search the deadly urge. Your walls of self-protection are walls of self-imprisonment. Here is very interesting. Very interesting. Because the demiurge in uh, Greek philosophy is the creator. The philosophical uh, creator, especially Platon. Huh? Um, he would be the creator of the universe. He will be the thought that we saw. You know, here, the demiurge is not that original uh, thought. It's the shaper of a false universe. I, and search and try to understand the deadly urge, your walls of self-protection are walls of self imprisonment. Who is the demiurge here? The shape of a false universe. Sometimes the word demiurge has the understanding 
of in, in certain mythology of being a half god or pretending to be god or uh, uh, i would say uh, a second rate god and i tend to think that would be the understanding this demiurge is close to god but not or taking the place of by making a false universe that would be for me as i understand it the veil that we saw at the beginning the false universe that that blocks humanity to be free huh? to be free so and who is this demiurge i would tend to think that's humanity thinking of themselves of being a god or some kind of and and building a wall of self-protection maybe against cosmic forces but maybe also protecting itself from everything different you know this deadly urge to build walls maybe walls between two parts of of humanity within humanity as well you know and wealth walls of self-imprisonment you remember for those of you who were with us with with me in rush rush they, they call the golden cage they call this the golden cage the golden cage is something that you build that you feel comfortable within but ultimately this golden cage um is a prison it, it you you are you feel at first comfortable but at one point in your life you might feel blocked and prison i think that's pretty much what is behind that i would personally understand it as the, the one thinking is some kind of a god i would think it's humanity here building a false universe and having a false understanding of the universe and self-protecting but self imprisoning i would go in that direction what do you think do you think it makes sense um, the introduction, the opening is reintroduced here with the flute and orchestra. We are going back to Alpha. And it is clearly a section of unification and probably of singularity. Because I think that the countdown to singularity means the countdown to uh, as if we were not in a race, but time is a factor for bringing everything of ourselves together into one person master of his or her life and uh, that would be my guess that this six eight as the opening the alpha is the unified person is the origin of us as being unified be without your fear for a thousand year and years and search the stillness deep inside is equivalent to the third uh, paragraph and then there's the addition of strive for harmony in duality to revise the book of life you see why i was telling you that it was two dimension of the human being has to be together has to connect and to work together and not against each other each other and these two will be able to flee from darkness towards the light so we could say maybe there is a darker part of ourselves but darker is not necessarily uh, negative in that meaning it's it's maybe an un unknown part something that we have to accept to welcome in our life i don't know but for sure it creates illusion dreams that are not positive in a way and fears to revise the book of life the tree of life book of life um i don't i don't know for you but there are many many symbols that i understand very very well from a from a christian point of view in that song <coughs> here there was a thought that grew in the abyss of time so there was a thought at the origin of it filled the vast space with matter we found at the end our goal here 
the unified humanity freed freed with a d uh, has been freed from darkness that fettered the soul that uh, we found at the end of our so now now it's not in prison anymore it's united and we find at the end our reason the thought the connection with the thought our goal the unified self now again the inter is the metal and row to cycle and there's what we call a modulation so we go on a tonality a little bit higher which brings this impression of it an intensification for the fin finale and then with the choir everyone singing all the instruments everyone is there we march on we're counting down to singularity while we drawn we are moving on to master wisdom to be free now drawn uh, there is um, a, a, it's a curious uh, arrival here probably he was looking for something uh, uh, that would uh, rhyme with down drown um, but uh, we can understand in a way that uh, as time pass um, we have to go towards singularity we have to go towards unity and uh, and probably is it going back to the abyss of time that is suggested here um, maybe maybe uh, I would that would that could be an understanding I think that's the only way I can make sense is as if the person is going back towards the essence towards the origin um, we are marching on so there's will there is conviction here we are counting down the time passing by we know that uh, there's a countdown three uh, ten nine seven because our lives are limited to singularity while we draw we are moving on to master wisdom to be free everything is understandable with the song here the finale we call it a point dog uh, the uh, the metal band there's a suspension with the singers with the choir and then the classical orchestra uh, will join in this finale in a crescendo blah, 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 and the final chords where everybody's there again so this is a great song oh my lord that's a great song and there's so much coherence musically i forgot to to give you the uh, the structure of the song but it's very well structured the um unity between the musical dimension of the song and the words is perfect it's it's it, we say irreprochable in french um as usual for me there is something Epica does is uh, I don't know anybody somebody told me that there was another band as good as Epica in using a choir as a character the choir is not on only uh, somewhere doing the back vocals <laughs> no no they are there they do something important in the and they are beautiful they, they beautifully directed I'm a, dire a choir director of another style of music but i know how this choir is very well directed uh the the the, the orchestra is wonderful all the other instruments the metal section is excellent tight perfect uh, the voice of uh, simone is surprised as me uh, surprised me at first because i was expecting something closer to classical because this music calls for uh, a more classical posture of the larynx that she has at the at the end of the song but um, i got used to it after two or three um, uh, two or three uh, part as for mark i will repeat what i did in my uh, tens uh, ten songs um survey of his, of epica uh, of all the groups using growls in a song for me epica does things right epica i i find that they use the growling um we say abonnation in french perfectly good timing 
perfect. It makes sense. Musically, it makes sense as well. In that song, it makes sense. If you're not used to it, don't worry. You will find it somewhere in your soul that there is a part for a darker or more, um, I would say, less uh, controlled part of ourselves that is expressed by Mach. The composer uh, knows how to compose. He knows music. The band knows music. This is a great song. We saw it in the uh, acoustic version as well. Melodic melodically, it's it's impeccable. Why does he choose to growl, to, 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 to do that? There's a reason, and I find him perfectly coherent. I love it that way. This kind of growling doesn't bother me a bit. I can listen to that music um, anytime. Well, no, metal, not any time, metal in general. <laughs> but, but I love it, really, really love it. I have no, no, no uh, 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 bad impression of that. So, and and in terms of, of mm, we don't have to repeat itself, but the meaning of the song is clear as well. So there is an origin, a real origin, uh, in which there is beauty, there is uh, uh, thought, there is all kinds of uh, the beauty and the life is there but there is a, a kind of a veil there's a false universe of of, of fear of of dreams of illusion um, that is blocking us to for from our reality in a way and as long as we we live according to that false universe that part of us is controlling us and we are not master of our life and i think that's pretty accurate now but this part does not have to be excluded or punched or or or, or fight uh, against no it has to be uh, taken care of it has to be integrated unified and these two parts together finally can leave darkness uh, if they do not unite in a way, they are stuck in darkness. But no, we don't have to. Uh, I loved it. I'm really looking forward for the next song. So uh, let's see what where we are. It's our journey with Epica will be then 12 songs, 12 weeks. Next week it's called The Skeleton Key. Uh, your contribution is a key to this channel. Don't hesitate to correct me. I don't want to be right. I want to understand and more than once you were the one helping me to understand the song so please write down your comments anytime when you you see that I made a mistake I am my ego is not there at all I really do want to understand the song now the reaction video of this song the skeleton uh, key will be uh, out on Wednesday 1 30 in the afternoon for Canada, Eastern Canada. Now, some parts of Europe, Europe have uh, different hours, time zone, and so on. Uh, a good way to make sure you'll be there, just ask for the hour of Montreal, 1.30 on Wednesday at the hour of Montreal, and you will know what is your time zone uh, corresponding to mine. Um, one thing to do is to subscribe and you will have a small reminder at the right time. Reminder in 38 minutes there will be the premiere of the reaction video of the skeleton key on Wednesday afternoon or evening or night. Now uh, the analysis will follow somewhere Saturday around noon and uh, you are always welcome. I love this beginning. It's wonderful and I hope we will continue on that energy on that direct in that direction. It's excellent, excellent really. Um, uh, too late. I found symphonic metal. I should have known that since the origin of that style, I would have been the happiest man on earth. <laughs> So for now, I say bye-bye. See you next week.